Dyslexia is a chronic problem with reading. It is a common learning difficulty affecting a large percentage of those identified as learning disabled. According to the National Institutes of Health, up to 15% of the U.S. population has significant difficulty learning to read. People with a learning difference like dyslexia may have trouble with reading, writing, spelling, math, and sometimes music. Three times as many boys as girls have dyslexia. Experts say dyslexia has little to do with recognizing the visual form of words. Rather, the brains of people with dyslexia are wired differently. This difference makes it difficult to break the letters of written words into the distinct, distinct sounds of their language, a capability called phonological awareness. Dyslexia can occur at any level of intellectual ability. Sometimes children with dyslexia appear to the teachers and parents to lack motivation or to not be trying hard enough. Dyslexia may be accompanied by, but is not a result of, lack of motivation, emotional or behavioral problems, and sensory impairment. A more positive view of dyslexia describes people with dyslexia as visual, multi-dimensional thinkers who are intuitive, highly creative, and excel at hands-on learning. Many people with dyslexia shine in the arts, creativity, design, computing, and lateral thinking. Dyslexia tends to run in families, and researchers have identified the genes that may be responsible for the condition. Scientists have also found specific brain differences involved in dyslexia. Brain images show that dyslexia results from certain structural differences in the brain, particularly in the left hemisphere. Brains of people with dyslexia show very little activity in areas known to be highly important in linking the written form of words with their phonetic components. So in order to read, people with dyslexia must develop alternative neurological pathways. They compensate by making more use of a front-brained section called Broca's area, traditionally associated with other aspects of language processing and speech. of dyslexia. They appear bright, highly intelligent, and articulate but unable to read, write, or spell at their grade level. Some labeled as lazy, dumb, careless, immature, or not trying hard enough, and or a behavior problem. Many of them are talented art, drama, music, sports, mechanics, storytelling, sales, business, or engineering but they seem to zone out or daydream often, get lost easily or lose track of time. Dyslexic students read and reread with little comprehension. They spell phonetically and inconsistently. They have difficulty putting thoughts into words, speak in halting phrases, leave sentences incomplete, stutter under stress and mispronounce long words, or transpose phrases, words, and syllables when speaking. They are often clumsy, uncoordinated, poor at ball or team sports, and have difficulties with fine and or gross motor skills and tasks, prone to motion sickness. Computing math shows dependence on finger counting and other tricks. Most dyslexics will exhibit about 10 of the following traits and behaviors. 
These characteristics can vary from day to day or minute to minute. The most consistent thing about dyslexics is their inconsistency. These children can be made to feel very different from their peers simply because they may be unable to follow simple instructions, which for others seem easy. It is a class teacher's responsibility to provide an atmosphere conducive to learning for all pupils within their class. A value to all children in the class is an outline of what is going to be taught in the lesson, ending the lesson with a resume of what has been taught. In this way, information is more likely to go from short-term memory to long-term memory. When homework is set, it is important to check that the children correctly write down exactly what is required. Try to ensure that the appropriate worksheets and books are with the child to take home. In the front of the pupil's homework book, get them to write down the telephone numbers of a couple of friends. Then, if there is any doubt over homework, they can ring up and check rather than worry or spend time doing the wrong work. Use different colored chalks for each line if there is a lot of written information on the board, or underline every second line with a different colored chalk. Ensure that the writing is well spaced. Leave the writing on the blackboard long enough to ensure the child doesn't rush, or that the work is not erased from the board before the child has finished copying. Save the dyslexic child the ordeal of having to read aloud in class. Reserve this for a quiet time with a class teacher. Alternatively, perhaps give the child advanced time to read pre-selected reading material to be practiced at home the day before. This will help ensure that the child is seen to be able to read out loud along with the other children. Real books should also be available for paired reading with an adult, which will often generate enthusiasm for books. Story tapes can be of great benefit for the enjoyment and enhancement of vocabulary. Reasons for poor handwriting at any age can be poor motor control, tension, badly formed letters, speed, etc. A cursive joint style is most helpful to children with dyslexic problems. Encourage the children to study their writing and be self-critical. Get them to decide for themselves where faults lie and what improvements can be made, so that no resentment is built up and yet another person complaining about their written work. Discuss the advantages of good handwriting and the goals to be achieved with the class. Analyze common faults in writing by writing a few well-chosen words on the board for class comment. Spelling mistakes pinpointed should be those appropriate to the child's level of spelling. Marking should be done in pencil and have positive comments. Try not to use red pens to mark the dyslexic child's work. There's nothing more disheartening for the child than to have work returned covered in red ink when they've inevitably tried harder than their peers to produce this work. By the end of the school day, a dyslexic child is generally more tired than his peers because everything requires more thought. Tasks are longer, nothing comes easily. More errors are likely to be made. Only set homework that will be of real benefit to the child. A dyslexic child's ability to write down thoughts and ideas will be quite different from the level of information the child can give verbally. For successful integration, the pupil must be able to demonstrate to the teacher that he knows the information and where he is in each subject. Be prepared to accept verbal descriptions as an alternative to written descriptions if appropriate. Dyslexics have many strengths. Oral skills, comprehension, good visual spatial awareness and artistic abilities. More and more dyslexic children could become talented and gifted members of our schools if we work not only with their specific areas of difficulty, but also with their areas of strengths. To do this, we have to let go of outmoded viewpoints that a dyslexic child must first fail in order to be identified. 